This is going to be a bit of a shorter video. That's because it's more of a rant kind of format. I'm also a bit sick. I it might be a little bit disjointed more than normal, at least. Uh, it's because I'm not scripting it. I'm just going at it. This was something that I feel comfortable with enough to just kind of do it off the cuff. So in one of my friend's discords, I was having a discussion about the best scores of, of last year, and the topic of Megalobox came up, and I talked about why I thought it was one of the best scores, and they brought up a rebuttal point saying something that I thought was kind of disrespectful and honestly has been brewing in my system and made me a bit upset, so I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna do this kind of rant. They said, yeah, but Megalobox only has like three pieces of music. And this really rubbed me the wrong way because it's really kind of disrespectful and not only that it's just wrong the more i thought about it i was like you know what i should probably say something about this and get rid of those misconceptions that just because multiple pieces of music use the same theme it's lazy or less important as anything else that's actually not true at all and in terms of scoring motifs light motifs and stuff are actually super important and so i'm going to explain some of that today I guess I should mention that this video is only going to be about, like, the actual theme and then variation on that theme, and it has nothing to do with particularly megaloboxes or any other scores variation in sound overall. This is going to only be talking about how there's one theme and then two, three, maybe four variations of that and why that's important. This has nothing to do with variation on, on sound or anything like that because I think that can be a very valid critique of some scores. The idea of using a theme and variations on that theme is super important in anime especially because you're generally writing a set amount of music before the show is made completely. So you're not writing to film, you're not writing to the show, you're writing to the idea of the show. And so you want to have themes that represent characters, themes that represent different things, and you need those themes to represent as many different points of those characters as possible, right? This idea is actually so important that I have praised, I think, four or five different shows for using theme and variations. On this channel, out of all of my videos, I've talked specifically about theme and variations four or five times. Now, I'm going to tackle this in kind of a somewhat systematic, somewhat disorderly way. I know that doesn't make sense, but deal with me on this one. I'm kind of just bring it up as I go along. First point is that it's lazy. That's not true. Music is not only a melody. A melody is not what makes music. There's multiple parts of music. There's harmony, instrumentation, orchestration, rhythm, how the timbres interact, literally just all of these small things. And so writing a variation on a theme, while you do have the theme and that gets rid of some of your hangups with writing, it's not like it's something super easy to do. Sometimes, yes, it is literally as simple as taking this theme that you had in the brass and putting it on piano and there you go. But oftentimes, no, you'll hear a lot of different things where harmonies change, rhythm changes to set a different mood, and this is really important. Gurren Lagann actually does a really cool thing with instrumentation, but I talk about that in that video, so if you really want to check that out, you can, but I'm not really going to rehash it here. But especially in terms of Megalobox that has that super electronic focus, the focus isn't as much on the melody. The melody, while yes, it is super important and is one of the most important things, with electronic music, a lot of the time, the sound design and synth creation is equally as important as the melody itself. And since the melody is being used in these different synths created for this variation, it's not like it made it a whole lot easier. Yeah, they don't have to write something new, but it also means it's more versatile, they can use it for different things. Let's say, without doing any spoilers, I'm gonna make something up, right? So let's say there's a huge fight scene, there's a gunfight with Joe. This never happens in the show. Again, these are just stupid examples off the top of my head. Let's say there's a gunfight with Joe, right? Are you gonna use the same music for that as when his best friend dies? Probably not. But you want them both to be connected, you want them to be impactful because they're important moments that form Joe and his character as time goes on. You're probably going to use Joe's theme for something that is Joe-centric and then something that is Joe-centric. It, it just makes sense to use Joe's theme in both and one variation of the theme is not going to work with the other. So having two, three, sometimes even four variations on one theme can be super, super useful, especially in a show like Megalobox that has this focus on characters and specifically fighting and the underdog story. It's very theme based. So no, it's, it's not lazy. It ties into a couple other things, right? 
So you have a sound director or a music director, music editor, whatever the project's name is, and you approve pieces or themes. You go through and approve things. It's not a super easy process. In fact, one of the last projects I had this past year, we had to rewrite a five minute piece five separate times, and that is horrible. That takes away a lot of time towards other things. It eats into your resources, and you have deadlines that you have to meet. There's all sorts of things that tie into this. So if you have one theme and that theme is going to work for multiple things and different variations, the turnaround time is a lot faster. And especially with anime shows, stuff like that, you need that faster turnaround time. With directors okaying a theme, you're able to churn out more variations, especially in the synthetic realm where it is more important to have the sound design and the idea of the music rather than entirely the melody. Yes, the melody is important before anyone gets on their keyboards and types angrily at me, but I wanted to explain this because people don't really understand all of the rigmarole and kind of shit, honestly, that you have to go through to get things approved and everything in between. Not only that, though, it also ties into character development and the type of show. Not every show is going to warrant theme and variation style, but there are a lot of shows that it, it aids in character and world building. I talk about it in Gurren Lagann. I talk about it in Dragon Maid. I talk about it for Megalobox, Shirobako as well. All very different types of shows, but this theme and variation style allows it to keep a through line, even if there are more weird moments, comedic moments, sad moments. I like in Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, when they use the same theme for something really happy, zany, funny, you know, really off the wall humor, and then they use the same theme for a really touching bonding moment between two of the characters. I think that that dichotomy is really fascinating and it creates a stronger bond with these characters and the characters to each other. It creates a through line and because you're not writing to film you can't put in light motifs like oh and right here we're gonna hint at Han's theme you know you can't do that if you're not doing it to film. So you have to guess what kind of themes and variations will fit in the most different scenarios since you're doing it to the idea of the show. Maybe you have a storyboard, maybe you have the source material. Whatever you have is what you're going to be working off of. You're not going to be able to watch the show and be like, ooh, this is a beautiful moment between these two characters. I'm going to write this theme between them. You have to write to events that you know are going to happen. You have to write about characters, themes, stuff like that. So writing theme and variations is a lot safer because then you have built-in leitmotifs that you can use and this kind of gets rid of certain issues. So especially with Megalobox and the synth design, right? One thing you can do is that you do bounce tracks, right? Okay, so what is bouncing a track? Bouncing tracks is basically getting it from your DAW digital audio workstation to a workable, editable thing for a lot of the stuff for Megalobox, I would guess it's probably mixed into a bass section that they bounce out. So everything that's bass gets bounced out and you could play that solo. It also gets percussion bounced out. You can play that by itself. You have the lead line, which you bounce out, can play that by itself and kind of maybe some harmonic stuff that you can bounce out, play that by itself. Now everything gets put together and mastered and mixed possibly by the composer, possibly by someone else. I'm not entirely sure how that was handled with Megalobox's production in particular, but that is kind of how it goes. You bounce things down and then send them, usually with a reference file of the composer's idea. So you can sometimes get a theme and variations from that. So you just strip out the percussion, you strip out the bass. This is up to the sound director or music director in that case to kind of decide that and decide if they only want to use the main theme. The problem is with Megalobox and synth creation, the synths are created in a way to present a certain type of energy. So even if you took out the percussion, the bass, the harmony, it's not gonna necessarily provide a different feeling. That's why there's a larger necessity for those theme and variations to be written separately. That's why theme and variations are important. That's why if you say this the score only has a few pieces of music. I'll get pretty upset because that's discounting the process. It's discounting the composers. And uh, yeah, just don't do that. Be smart. Uh, there you go. That's a little bit of a look behind the scenes as to why that might have happened, why that is important, and why that fits for certain shows better than it does for others. Anyway, thanks for listening to my ramble. I appreciate it. I hope you had a good time regardless. I hope you guys have a great day and a greater life, and I will see you in the next one.